I want to do just a quick recap from the ending of the last video. You'll recall the budget variance is our actual fixed manufacturing overhead, what we actually incur, less our budgeted, what we budgeted for. So this will measure if we came in over budget or under budget. It'll measure our spending on our fixed manufacturing overhead. The volume variance, on the other hand, is our fixed portion of our predetermined overhead rate multiplied by the direct labor hours we budgeted for minus the direct labor hours we are allowed given the output that we have, our standard direct labor hours. So, uh, assuming that our uh, fixed overhead rate was $6, let's say that we budgeted for 100 direct labor hours and we actually could have used or should have used 120. So 100 minus 120 is negative 20 times 6 will give us negative 120. It's negative, which means if we follow closely here, what does that mean? We should have applied overhead at the rate of $6 an hour for 100 hours but we actually used 120. We actually applied for 120. So we over applied by 120. Remember, negatives are favorable. Well, let's assume instead that we had the budget for 100 hours, but we should have only used 80. So 100 minus 80 is 20 to the positive side times 6 is 120. So we should have applied $600 based on our budget. But based on the output that we had, we were only capable of applying 480 instead of 600. So we're under-applied by 120, which is unfavorable. So again, the actual costs we incur versus the budget that we set will give us a budget variance. That is useful. That tells us how we spent our money on the fixed costs. They really shouldn't change. When we compare the budget versus what we applied, notice I'm saying here applied, not standard. We apply it based on the standard direct labor hours per use, but this is not a standard budget. It's what we applied. We find that the difference between the budget and what we applied we called a volume variance and we can see very plainly that it really is a volume variance. It's the difference in the volume that's allowed based on the output that we produce how many hours we're using to carry that overhead to the cost of the goods sold or to the cost of inventory. And of course our total amount between what we actually did and what we applied, if we remember our T accounts for our manufacturing overhead, actual versus applied, the difference will either be under or over applied. So the total variance measures our over or under applied overhead. So budget variance, pay attention to. Total variance, our over or under applied overhead, yes. The volume variance is only helpful in determining these two and in determining our utilization of our facilities, not in determining our costs. So let's have a look at what this, uh, what this may look like, our fixed cost, what it may look like graphically. And what we're going to do is we're going to plot um, a standard cost curve. And what does that look like? Well over here is our fixed manufacturing overhead here's our direct labor hours and this should make clear if we understand the uh, uh, the function y equals m x plus b that y is a function of x y is a function of x so our fixed manufacturing overhead is a function of our direct labor hours we've already said that that this, the, the, the fixed manufacturing overhead, is our estimated manufacturing overhead costs at the denominator level of activity divided by the denominator level of activity. So if we were going to draw out a standard curve, for every amount of direct labor hours that we incur, 
we will have an ever-increasing cost. What will that cost be? The slope of this line will be the fixed portion of the predetermined overhead rate. So it may look something like this. How do we read that as we move across? And let's say that we incur, uh, we expect to incur this many direct labor hours. We would draw a line up to the curve and we would move across. And we saw that our budget said 25,000. So this is what is budgeted. This is what we budgeted. During the course of a month, we have a certain level of output. Once we look at that output, we can then multiply it by the standard for the amount of hours involved in creating that output to get the amount of hours that should have been incurred for that level of output. And depending on where it is, we're going to draw it out here. This is the standard direct labor hours allowed for the level of output. And this is what we use to apply our overhead. So how much are we going to apply? You know, we draw the line up and we draw it over to here. And we saw that we applied $30,000. We budgeted for 25. We applied 30, not because we experienced $5,000 in higher costs, but because we moved from this, from a low level of direct labor hours that we budgeted, to a higher level allowed by the output means that we had more hours to carry every amount of fixed cost. Remember, each direct labor hour will carry $6 of fixed overhead to the work in process account. So the more direct labor hours there are, each one carries $6 with it to work in process. That's what applying means. This is called a volume variance. And it is the difference between what we applied, 30,000, versus what we budgeted to apply, 25,000. So if our costs came in line, we should have over applied 5,000. However, when we look at our costs, they came in. These are our actual costs. I should draw this out so you can see that this here is called applied. Our actual costs came in at 27500 This difference between these two curves is called the budget variance. This measures our spending control on fixed overhead costs. We see that we spend $2,500 more than budgeted. Well, we have to ask questions about that because fixed are supposed to be fixed. They're not supposed to vary. That's why we look only at the fixed component of the predetermined overhead rate. The difference between actual and applied is what we over applied. So based on our budget of $25,000, we should have over applied $5,000 because we applied thirty. dollars However, we found that we only over applied $2,500 because we had a budget variance of $2,500. So I hope that clears that up a bit. And just sort of to end the uh, the conversation here. Let's have a look at all of the our variable, uh, sorry, all of our manufacturing overhead. We broke it down into a variable manufacturing overhead and a fixed manufacturing overhead. And we saw that our variable manufacturing overhead created, we could look at it in terms of a spending variance. And the spending variance was, did we spend more or less on variable manufacturing overhead than we budgeted? From that, I mean also added to that, we have an efficiency variance. And the efficiency variance has a cost as well. Then for our fixed manufacturing overhead, we have a budget variance, which we saw our budget variance here is 2,500. And we have a volume variance. And here we saw our volume variance was 5,000. Now notice what's going on here. I'm just going to use this. Our budget variance was 2,500 unfavorable. Our volume variance is 500 favorable. From that, we said that we over applied 2,500. You can do the same thing here, which means if you add up all these components, the total of all of this will give you a total for what you've over or under applied 
total manufacturing overhead because you have a spending variance and an efficiency variance for your variable component. We've already seen how these two net out. Uh, the budget variance and the volume variance will net out to determine our over or under. It happens up here too. The same thing happens. So if you add, this is over or under. If you add these two together, you'll get a total for over or under applied. Um, one last thing before you go. Uh, over, if we over apply, that is considered favorable. Why? Because we actually our costs came in actually lower than the amount that we applied. If we under apply, that is considered unfavorable because now we have to apply even more. How do we keep it straight? U, U. Under starts with a U, and unfavorable starts with a U. There we go.